Hi everyone and welcome back. If it's your first time here, my name is Kostis and in this video I have the privilege, privilege of having all of the members, both of them, <laughs> of ESE <laughs> Whoop! Yeah, Shane and Georgi Kane! Hi, 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 hi. Hi guys, Shane from Shane's Eurovision with you and Georgi Kane from Georgi Kane. Uh, so nice nice. To be, it's so nice to be here. It's so nice to have you here. Uh, and it's so nice to have you together, together at the same time. Us three, we haven't done a video together. That's true. Exactly. No. When you proposed the idea last week, I was very excited. In fact, actually, I have um, nested my way into this one because you two had planned one together. And then I basically was like, I want to do it as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was going to do it with you as well, separately. And then I was like, wait, here's your whoop. And with like the three of us, we also combine all of the free parties, at least the first yep. week, Madrid, yes. Barcelona and London. So yes. this was a great opportunity to talk pre-parties. Pre I agree. See, but see. before we do that, I want I want to ask you, what, how did you come up with the ESU Whoop thing? Uh, I think I want to sneeze. Go for it. <laughs> you can answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like, he wants, he wants to go first. No, but I can go first. I mean, me and Shane were talking and we we're discussing a lot while doing the Eurovision Tea also with everybody. And then Shane visited me here in Hamburg. We did some videos together, of course, in some in summer or when was it? And then we were discussing, he said, like, our chemistry is actually perfect together. And we had so much fun. It doing... is perfect together, together, your chemistry. Because we can even we can even talk about still about Eurovision, but in the most stupid way and still have fun with it. And then mm -hmm. we thought, like, until we arrange, because in the Eurovision, team, it's sometimes very, very hard to arrange to be all of us together. It's like someone has always to do something. Some people are, like, uh, busy. We are also many times busy. And then we said, like, we were thinking, I mean, one week long about how to do it and what to do. And we came up with the ESC whoop. But until we come until the name, it was a huge chat from morning until evening, two, three days in a row. And then we thought, like, let's do this kind of series. It's like us having fun and whoever wants to join, joins. So, yeah, it's like... It is very fun to watch. But wait a minute. So you were, you spent... Three days talking about the name and you came up with the SEO. You see how basic we are? We love that. <laughs> right. Well, first and foremost, yeah. So I proposed the idea to Georgie. So it was off Eurovision season. And I said, at the end of the day, it's easier to just organize with two people than it is mm. with the group of people, the SCT. We've recorded before, we really enjoyed it. Moreover, we were, we were starting to become friends, like genuine friends. So it seemed like hitting two birds with one stone. And I also said to Georgie, <laughs> in regards to like moving forward with YouTube, I like thinking and exploring the idea of moving away from reactions and stuff like that. I liked the idea. And there seemed to be somewhat of a market on YouTube to have a kind of Eurovision themed thing. Um, so even like Maxi Rainbow's kind of, they've got away and done their podcasty thing this season. I think it was slightly inspired by that, slightly inspired by, um, uh, who's that again? Uh, yeah, so we were talking about that and we were like, can we do something Eurovision themed? And yeah. so that was the initial idea. I came up with the name, but that was after because it was getting, we just didn't have a name for ages. No, it's good. I'm, I was just joking. I liked it. It's fun. Huh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> enough about you. Let's talk about Eurovision. Okay. Mm. About Eurovision. Uh, Eurovision parties. Madrid, Barcelona, and London. We went to. Shane, yours was the first one. Madrid, right? Well, we had that kind of like really mini one, the Melfest pre-party, which was, I guess, a, a, an unofficial slash official start of the season. But anyway, we'll bypass that. Madrid was the first big one. Yes. It's always, it? always, always so unbelievably good. So this year they, as like as someone going, like they added an additional night on the Thursday, which was what again? Costume party. The fancy dress night. The fancy dress night. Um, and so, I mean, yeah, like, and then the Friday night is the Better Dawn Fest acts night and other kind of old Eurovision acts. And then 
Yeah, how many acts did Madrid have in the end? 26? 20, 20, 26. 26. And Joel... Oh, they uh, did have 26. Okay. Yeah, so it was supposed to be 28. So um, I don't. I still don't know why Norway um, did a, didn't... A, a video. I think they were originally supposed to be there. And obviously, whether to what extent you count Georgia, because Georgia was there... But, but obviously, uh, due to uh, personal reasons, didn't perform their song. They performed Christina Aguilera's Hurt instead. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Because uh, she lost some, I think. She right? lost her brother, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. I mean, like, it was the first time I've gone... Like, I haven't done a preview party for years. I haven't done London for years. This year I did, um, obviously, we'll talk about it in a second, um, Barcelona. So this was like my third year. It was the one that I knew the most. And yeah, it's amazing. It's well run. It always gets lots and lots of acts. But I was surprised. I thought all of the ones from Madrid were going to go to London. Mm-hmm. But there were c- kind of some ooh, uh, ah, key, okay. ones, key ones missing. Technical issues. Um, so, for example, Portugal wasn't in London and I was Fortunate enough to see Portugal. Uh, yeah. Ukraine wasn't in in London, right? No. And so they were in Madrid. Um, I think those all of them they had problems with their visas, right? No. Oh, is that so reason why? Uh, Ukraine. I, I don't think they were ever announced for London. And uh, Portugal, Yolanda. No, has she told me that uh, she couldn't do many pre parties because. Straight after Eurovision, she has other shows like concerts that she's preparing, and she has to rehearse for everything. Uh, are you okay with your life? You found it. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah. So basically, Yolanda told me because we had an interview that uh, that yeah, she has so many things like preparing and stuff. So the only pre party she could do was Madrid. Because okay. I I saw an interview where she said that she doesn't like flying. And so she oh. drove. She drove to Madrid from Portugal. So I, I know, know that, that she drove, but I didn't but know. Isn't that she Portugal. also? Isn't she also the Amsterdam one now? Yes. Is she? I don't know. But also, we'll talk about it in a second. I think I got to see a better performance of Ollie than you did, Costas. Yeah. We'll do. Let's first finish the Madrid one. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go with the Madrid. Um. I mean, what? <sighs> It's a long, I don't know what London was like. Like the key difference between Madrid and Barcelona, because Barcelona is a TV show, like they can't muck about with time. Madrid is like over four hours Um, to the point where you're like, so they have obviously junior Eurovision acts and then they have obviously previous Eurovision acts, which is great for you guys. Like Tampta, it was amazing to see Tampta. Never seen Tampta Uh... live before. It was iconic. But some of the previous Eurovision acts, because I didn't realise this, this is probably really naive on my part, I didn't realise that they get paid. I thought it was just promotion, and so they would pay for their flights, their hotels. Absolutely not. And moreover, every single artist charges a different fee. Wait, even the Eurovision artists are getting paid. Even even this... Is that only for the Madrid or in general? General. But wait, you mean even this year's Eurovision Act? That's what costs us. Yes, they get paid. Really? They don't and understand. It's not equal. It's not equal. Then I don't understand why not all like delegations are taking part because I had heard I don't know I don't remember from who that Greece usually doesn't take part in Eurovision pre parties because of the budget. Greece never and I always thought that Earth is just not paying for her to go. Yeah, on. that's what I thought as well. I was told this information from a bigger YouTuber than us, and I'm going to okay. trust it. And okay. then I asked someone at Barcelona who, I won't say their name, but is one of the press people saying, can I just confirm something? Are these people getting paid? And they said, yes. I'm happy for that. And I'm more mad. Why I am more back than back. Yeah, Why like, is so boring then? I think I think it, then it has to do with the delegation. For some reason, they ha- they like to keep everything secret. You know, exactly. So the the point is obviously I. So if so, for example, this four and a half hour show. So take for example the Junior Eurovision acts or other acts. If they do three or four songs, it's because they charge less per song. 
Because in Hit is taking very less uh, money. She's always performing three, four songs. Who? Sen Hit. Sen <laughs> Many people so, in London performed a couple of songs. Huh? And many people in London performed a couple of songs, and uh, yes. all Ollie performed like four songs. Okay. And I don't think he's Ollie cheap. charged less. He's cheap. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think Ollie Alexander is cheap. He's no, he's not. I think he was just the headliner, so and, yeah, and yeah, it's his uh, country. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you, uh, um, you, you have shocked us with this information. Like we have to. Oh, talk I'm saying here now. We, we are all processing. I'm, like I'm just trusting this person who told me in Madrid. Because this it? person, I'm gonna, in, I'm gonna edit it out. Who is it? Yeah, because this person in Madrid told me how much Hera Bjork charges per song compared to Charlotte Pirelli. Okay. It's a big difference. Yeah. Okay. It's a big difference. Zero. Zero's difference. But when I asked, I swear he said, even the artists this year charge. But then I'm now thinking, is that true? But I asked the press guy in Madrid, in Barcelona. Yeah. If, if that's paid. true, I really don't understand why Greece is not taking part in three parties. It's just too stupid. And the only reason could be only that they want to keep it all secret. Yeah. But <laughs> she, can she can also just move around by herself, like not to show anything that she's about to show. In the exactly. Semi. Like, I think show, they are afraid that, that, that what if they don't perform that, well, you know? Just to show vocally that here I am, I can sing it. Yeah. Here I am, I'm partying, whatever. But yeah. ho hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. It might have something to do with contracts with broadcasters then. Because this is what I'm thinking, like, because I, I start being silent. Yeah, if Ollie signed a contract with the BBC, when he performs that song around, can he charge a fee if, if he's working for the BBC? So I reckon potentially each act signs different contracts. Uh... I can imagine some broadcasters, once you sign up to that broadcaster, you're theirs. Yeah. And, and as a result, you can't get any money necessarily. Because the reason why these acts get money is because obviously they've got management and record labels and stuff like yeah. that. Maybe, maybe it makes sense. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Let's go. Let's go whoever whoever knows, either write something in the comments or text us privately if you don't want to write uh, publicly. Like and if you yeah, private message me if you ever want to hire Charlotte Pirelli for your birthday. I know how much she charges per song. <laughs> It's a lot. <laughs> oh my god. So the thing with the pre parties that Madrid and Barcelona is like they they are several days, right? They're not just one day. While in London, everything is in one day. That must be very, very, very It's intense. Yes. For me that I did press and then the show, I was like exhausted. Like I and also I... also Costas. We both did Barcelona and Madrid, which were three days. And for the whole thing was a fraction of what you paid. <laughs> and I met people in both Madrid and Barcelona from the UK that said it may, it was cheaper to fly and to stay in Madrid and Barcelona and get the ticket than it was to go to London. I mean, I don't what? think the Wait, tickets to Barcelona me. and Madrid and stay are... What? How much was London? What, what, how much was The London? general admission was 100 something. For for the concert, yeah. Pounds, Are you British kidding? pounds, not even. And that was the that was the cheapest ticket. That was the cheapest ticket, but that was in the second release. In the first, I think it was less. It was like seventy something. This is crazy. But for example, at the press, I want to ask you: Did you have um, small beverages while you were there so many hours? Because we had in Barcelona for free small cocktails. Yeah, we, we also we which... also had pit massages because <laughs> they, they were like they, they're on the feet all this time. They need a massage, so they they massage their feet. Like um, William from Google Blocks. <laughs> yeah. Bullshit talk. <laughs> I'm never gonna get accredited again ever. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, now, really, did well, you have small, uh, like, did they bring you water or some kind of sandwich or small cocktails? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know because I, I went alone there. So I was all the time with 
like I had in my mind, how can I reach the people, the, the artists, but without leaving my camera, because I had a GoPro with me, which was a present by my boyfriend, and I didn't want it to break, and someone could knock it over while I'm away running after artists. So I was like holding the, my camera and my ring light, like <laughs> next to it. Sorry, like, wait, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, have it all... what? I have it all in my head because he's standing with his GoPro and the light there and then from him here is passing I don't know, Luna because Luna, 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 wait, wait, wait I cannot run, just come here, come here yeah, something like that at some point because I wanted to speak to Musti because he was very far from me and very far it's not that big the press room but he was at the other corner yeah, yeah. of the press room uh, I said to someone else, I don't even remember to who from press that they were not my friend. Can you stay with my camera? I need to go there. That's good. That's good. That's yeah, good. I was like, so yeah. But I went the, co the concert. How was it as artist? What did you? Let's go. Wait before we go. To, before we go to the concert and we talk about that, let's stay at the press. So oh. the difference in presses, in presses in in the pre the how the press is. Um, I don't know, functioning at its pre-party is big. Like, for example, in Madrid, I know you stay in a queue, right? You queue to, to meet an artist. Yeah, yeah, so Madrid is interesting. So the press event um, is the other way around. So Barcelona is <laughs> the purple carpet and the press, different days, but in Madrid, it's the other way around. So they have like a big launch and then depending on how late it kind of finishes, um, depends on how long 300 different press people can have access to the artists. So this year we had 45 minutes, which is historical because the year, the first year I did it, I had like an hour and a half. Last year was an hour. This, it was 45 minutes. So you had to, first of all, like invoke the Hunger Games. Yeah. So as soon as they were like, artists go to your tables, like some people had already worked this out and basically gone straight to who they wanted. And so I had to be basically very selective. So, for example, if you've got 45 minutes, it is pointless trying to go to the big guns because you'll be in that queue for 45 minutes. And moreover... And you'll get just one video, maybe. Yeah. So as a result, like, there were some artists, like, particularly in the first five minutes, no one was around them. And I was like, oh, I want to speak to you, but, like, I'm already in the queue for Poland and I really, really want to do that. So in 45 minutes, I spoke to three and I was going to do here a Bjork, but they like literally pushed me out like so much. Okay. So they wouldn't even let me have a picture with her. And it was only yeah. till she intervened and said he can have a picture shortly that, she, okay. that I had a picture with her. But yeah, so basically there's tables all, all around the room, 300 uh, like press people, like literally, like, and they're like, go. And like, everyone's pushing everyone out the way, trying to work out where the tables are to kind of, yeah, go to uh -huh. who you want to go to. Okay, oh. that sounds intense, and I thought London was intense. What about uh, Barcelona? Barcelona was very fine. I that was my first. Which, day, which I... one? Which one was fine? Because that because a bit like Madrid, but, you have the red carpet and that. The so Friday, which one are you talking? I am talking about the Friday one. I was very fine. I had fun. The Friday is the red carpet or the other one? Yes, it, the red. So in Barcelona, the purple carpet was much better and easier for interviews than the actual press event the next day. Okay, yeah. the, fr the 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 Friday one for me, it was like I mean, I was the whole time with Shane. We were together. We were having our own fun because we saw that the the queue to stand in front of the carpet there was literally no space for us. The carpet was, was the tiniest. Everybody I've went. Ever seen. Everybody went and there was no space for us. So yeah. me and stayed behind. We took pictures, we took videos, we took cocktails. Uh -huh. We were just watching <laughs> a lot of cocktails. <laughs> we just we were just watching at the people after that we went to the green spot. There was exactly a green grass thing where other people of media were standing there. So we stood there, and actually, all of a sudden we saw that the artists, after they passed the carpet, were going there, and they were basically there alone or with one or two people talking so vulnerable where, they were vulnerable <laughs> yeah. and this is where, where where i got the chance to talk to five of them because it was very easy it was yeah. like we just went and we said like can i have like two minutes i have two questions they were all saying yes nobody said no 
And actually there, I liked it way more than the perfect carpet for me. It was green. It was beautiful. It was nature. And it was in general fun. I had very much fun. It was long, but I didn't feel any kind of pressure about anything. Because he had five cocktails <laughs> before his first one. Yeah, I think if I, I, if I had had uh, a few cocktails, I would be better on myself as well. Okay, yeah. And then the Friday was completely different. The fri- the Saturday, I mean. The Saturday yes. was completely different pra- place. Place. It was closed thing. It was... Uh, it, I, like, they were so good like with Barcelona like at the end of the day so in comparison to Madrid number one the Thursday night all press were invited to a dinner um, which was amazing with a drag show which was brilliant so the press could meet each other Uh, the purple carpet I mean the venue was insane we had free cocktails and it was just just people milling about chilling and it was like really really chill and easy even as Georgie said as the artists came off the purple carpet they were just walking around and you could like take pictures and interview them which was great um and Nora was very long just sitting there next to us saying yeah, yeah yeah just sitting next to us Aiko and that's why we just we were just talking exactly. yeah. it was just the 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 actual press event it was a bit difficult because First of all, it was outside. No, because I really don't want to say anything bad about Barcelona because we were really taken care of. Even so much so half. So it was a long day. We got there at 830 and it actually overran. It was supposed to finish at four. I think I left at five. So I didn't even see like Slimon and stuff come out. Um, And so but halfway through, they came out with pat lunches. Yes. Which was really sweet. Water, sandwich, uh, cup. Yeah. Uh, That's so good. That's yeah. so nice. But the way it worked is the artists, you could see they were tired. So they, they'd done their sound check. And so basically once they were done with their sound check, they would come out. So at any one time in this courtyard, there was only actually two artists with about a hundred press trying to get to two artists. Yeah. So I, other than obviously Albina and Hooray's, which I don't want to be like, they were less popular, but I guess they were because they're not like 2024. Mm. Like they were the only ones I had an opportunity to to speak to because even someone I, like Neb- Nebulosa, so they had like an area oh. for Spanish speakers or Spanish press and an area for international. So with Nebulosa, they literally just put them in this area and you just had to flock around and just shout a question so everyone was recording at the same time um so it was a very very different feel but we were so lucky that the friday was so good i just chilled and enjoyed my free lunch on the saturday that's good you had a free lunch when you were with your friends and uh, eurovision artists around you yeah. That's a, that sounds like a nice evening. That was a big, big highlight for me personally. I was I had fun. I enjoyed it. I was I was very overwhelmed. It was nice. Yeah. I remember it forever. I had fun too, like at the London pre party. It was a very nice experience, but it was my first time as press. So although I had some inform- information about how it's gonna go, you can never know until you are there, you know. Like Georgia, you had told me that. It's different in London. You told me that, you know, I will have my own space and then I will have to reach the artists. So I had that in my mind. Yeah. Um, and stuff from the stuff that I hear from Shane Pack or from stuff that I hear all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. So it was just a, but um did you uh did you get the chance? Where the that's my biggest question. I don't know, maybe it's even like very simple, but did you get uh, the chance? Were you in the same room with the Wee Wee blocks? With uh, with yes, uh, uh Wee so Wee we Wee were all, we were all at the same room, like we 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 blocks were exactly be, behind me, a bit diagonal where I was, you know, their table that where they were. I know it exactly where Costas was because I was yeah. able to watch him live. So yeah. Eurovo- Eurovox was doing a live stream of the press room and it just so happened that Costis was just right in front of the camera. I was right in front day. of the camera and I didn't know until you texted me with a picture. And I like messaged I'm Costis, watching. I was like, I can see you, like a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> and then another reactor texted me as well. <laughs> and I was like, okay, guys, okay. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so now not only I am lost, here and I'm trying to find a few artists to interview, 
but everyone can see how lost I am <laughs> on a live stream. I was like, okay, <laughs> this is too much. I think I think you did great because I saw some of the interviews you were you did. Oh, thank you. I thank haven't you. seen them yet. I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to the one with you and Gustav. I know you've interviewed him before, but I know that you love him. So I, I really... love him, and I was so happy to meet Gustav in person. You did four or five, right? Five, six. Six with Gustav, five uh, new artists, and yeah. uh, with Gustav from last year, six. This is very good. I did. Yeah. Who, who, did who did you have again? Do you did Did you have Musti? No, I didn't do Musti. I've I've done an interview with Musti like through Zoom before. Uh, we didn't do it this time because when Musti came in, like he went, they all went go to We We Blogs first. And they did two interviews with them, one live stream, I think, or something like that. And then one with they were doing with the De Deban. And then um, ESC United was right next to them. So whoever was going away from We We Blogs, ESC United were, were taking them straight away. So there was but we we blogs had a long of a long time with the artists yes they did they did so especially at the beginning that the artists yeah. were coming one by one yeah the, the whole press we were just waiting for we we blogs to finish with the artists you know yeah because i, I saw it, some it, it of the videos i saw so. some of the videos and i saw how william is just sitting and they were just coming but yeah the... that's he how was, he was he was live streaming wasn't he he was live streaming yeah i, I think so i think so so the thing is that it would be more helpful if, if a few artists would come at the same time. So one is going to We We Blogs, another one is going to someone else, another one is going to somewhere else. So, so yeah. that was quite good about Madrid. So Madrid, the 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 red carpet. I think it is the red carpet in Madrid. So yeah, um, they slowly trickle, but at one point they were all um, coming down, and that, it was. The, the organizers there or the press kind of links were quite good because they would grab an artist and direct them to different and it didn't matter how big or how small you were they kind of knew roughly okay. the the like not the main ones but the ones that sh they, they should be going to and so someone would enter the carpet and there's a big congestion so they would take them and bring them further down to like yeah, I I two of my interviews was because they brought them to me oh that's nice no, yeah, that's nothing I'm because like oh Blah, 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 nothing to do with me but obviously first of all like obviously i'm english and there's lots of spanish press around, so that makes me slightly different yeah it's just to move the congestion away yeah yeah of course uh, that helps like i was i was lucky because as long as we were waiting for the artists to finish with other press it happened that i met some of the people from their team like for example was it with Estonia, who was my first one that I did? The girl who was with them, she left her water of bottle on my table where I had like set, uh, done my yeah. setup, and I was <laughs> like, "I'm sorry, here's my setup." Uh, uh, like this, yeah, and she was like, "Oh, you should have threw my bottle down," and I'm like, "No, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you." And so we started talking and then I realized she's with the guys from Estonia. And then I'm like, oh, can I have the guys, please? And she was like, yes, of course. And she brought them. Then I realized that this is the person I have to speak to, you know, instead of going and talking oh. to artists, just go to their people, you know. That's how we got Georgie his first ever interview. Which yeah. one? Which one was your first one? Theodora. Theodora. Uh, I think... She was not in London. Was she supposed to be? No, she I wasn't. Don't know. She wasn't in London. Yeah, so she was speaking to someone else. And then I'm like, I, I don't want to take your glory whatsoever. But I said to you, do you want an interview with Teodora? You said yeah. yes. And I I mean, I'm normally very, very shy anyway, but I had five cocktails. I was like, screw this. Yeah, yeah. So I... And I'd already, uh, the, he would never recognize me, but I, I recognized, well, it was obvious it was her person anyway. Um, and so I just went over and was like, my friend's got some questions for Teodora. Is that okay? And he was like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Yeah. Oh, by the way, about Musti, I don't know why I stopped saying. So anyway, there were problems at um, the pre-party, the sound, uh, the sound checks. I so, heard. So people 
would come to the press room and then would run straight. They would call them for rehearsals and they were coming in and out or they would leave very early. And Mursti had to go like as soon as he finished with We Will Blogs and I think he did uh, a couple big, like ASU United or something else like that. And uh, we saw each other and we hugged and stuff. And he, he was like, the guy from his team was like, you, we have to go to the rehearsal. And Musti asked, like, can I do with cost this one video? And the guy was like, no. And then Musti was very nice about it. I obviously you've done yours um, uh, via Zoom. Like he was one of the few people that I was managed. I able was able to speak to in Madrid. And um, he's really funny because that that man can talk. <laughs> so yeah. Much his his mat like after the one before me, the management went in being like, "You need to talk less," as in they have very quick questions, give them quick answers because the queue for him was massive. Yeah. And then I was with someone else; I'd already done mine, and the guy that was like still in the queue, he was saying that at one point, just behind the camera, the management would like do two minutes and then just keep doing this because he just wants to talk. It's so nice. His energy is like infectious. And I know what you're talking about, because when we did the interview uh, by a Zoom, he started and he started talking and then he realized it and he was like, oh, sorry, do I talk too much? And I'm like, no, that's why I called you here. Keep talking. <laughs> I don't know. But it, the, what, the management wasn't being horrible. It's just the fact that his line was huge. Yeah, <laughs> there yeah. There so course. many people yeah. that wanted to speak to him. Yeah. I mean, like I said, we only had 45 minutes in total. Um, but yeah. Another one that I was really happy that I did was Bambi Thug. Yes. I, I love Bambi Thug so much. I love their song. I need them and I'm so jealous. They are so nice. And I love their song from the first moment since I, when I reacted to all of the songs at the national selection. That was my favorite from the first uh, listen. And uh, yeah, I always loved them. And we had a very small interaction through social media before. and uh, But I didn't know that they would recognize me and if you go to the Eurovox live, you will see that as soon as they entered the press room and they saw me, they came straight to me and they did the first video with me. Like, and they hugged me. Like, they are amazing. They are such an amazing person, you know. Fun, fun, fun. In comparison with other artists that uh, they will not speak to you or they, I don't know. Are they not allowed to speak to you? Are they, they do they not want you have, to speak to you? you have that feeling? Yeah, definitely. Angelina Mango was, uh, did very specific interviews and left. But I don't know to if be, it's... To be uh, fair, that was the same in Madrid and Barcelona. But actually, is that fair? No, that is fair. That is fair. I Because I, I left as she came onto the red carpet in Madrid um and because ollie ollie and ollie's gang there was literally everyone else had one person with them ollie yeah. had 10 <laughs> one was a makeup person that every three or four minutes was topping up his makeup no one else had that the only other person that i've ever known in madrid to have that was lazara last year and she had okay. three people with her one was a makeup he had 10 and he had um the head of delegation is it head of delegation lee is it yeah. Lee? Like just I randomly know. standing like with this gang with Ollie. Anyway, mm -hmm. he was already told exactly which ones he will speak to. He spoke to two. Okay. And we were told like they were the only ones that he would speak to. As in do yeah. interviews. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like, I don't know if it's not, is it because they're not allowed from the delegations? Is it because they're protecting? I, that they're I, I, I get it, right? Like, even obviously something like my channel, <laughs> I'm going to be asking stupid questions. There's like, obviously, 300 people. Realistically, at the end of the day, Ollie, rightfully so, because particularly in Madrid, one size press, one size fans, that's a new thing they introduced last year, which does also reduce the space for people who have press passes. So he, I, he spent more time with the fans, which I think is the right call to make. But I mean, at the end of the day, like, you know, there is 300 people, all varying degrees of what social media outlets or what media outlets they have. And and I get it. So basically,
basically Madrid knew exactly who was where and knew exactly the two people to guide him towards. Obviously, yeah. one of them, I think one of them was Weeby Blogs. <laughs> okay, yeah, definitely. I sure. think they did. I, I saw their interview, like uh, all his interviews yeah. with Weeby Blogs. Yeah. And obviously, you know, I absolutely do not begrudge that. That makes total sense. Of course, because it's the channel with the most reach, you know. Yeah. So uh, it makes sense that if they speak to one YouTube channel, it's going to be the one with the most Rich, yeah, of yeah. course, and we blogs are the first ever channel that started doing reactions. Of so, course, yeah. if I was an artist, the first channel I would go would be we will blogs. But if I was an artist in Eurovision, then after I did the ones that I know that they have the biggest reach, I would be like, okay, do I have still more time? I want yeah. to speak with others that are here for me, you know, like yeah. because we are there for them to support them. Yeah. Everyone with very different reach, you know. But also in regards to moving forward, and Georgie will testify to this with some acts this year, doing this for the last two years, and I don't know whether you think the same actually costs this after your experience, irrespective of your connection with the song, if you meet an artist that you think is an absolute effing legend, then my perception of the song slight changes. And then as a result, moving forward on my channel, I am so positive about that song. And uh, grabbing that and asking you, did that happen with you two this year? And with who? Which yes. artists? With which artists? Germany. Germany. I thought I liked that's a nice before. guy. I didn't have the chance to interview him, but I saw him how he interacted with everyone. He was such a when nice When the song guy. comes... When the song comes on now, like I liked, I think we all, I don't, I don't know anyone that dislikes that song. No. All right. I think no. everyone's yeah. like, it's a decent song, mm. but ultimately amongst the pack, it's not, you know, you can't uh, bop, female bop. It's not your, ah. Uh, it's yeah, just it's a not in your face, couple... you know, it's not going to grab your attention. Absolutely. So, but as a result, since meeting him and realizing he's an absolute effing legend, when that song comes it's on so now, fun. really, really enjoy it. That's yeah. why I vote for Germany, people. <laughs> what about you, Georgie? Did you change uh, your mind? No, well, actually, Dons? because I spoke... Doms, Doms. I spoke... Wait, I spoke That's to That's what five. I was going to say. Say, I spoke, say your experience I with Doms. to five, and basically all of them, I like the songs, like the Adora song, I liked either way. I just met her live. Slovenia, I have in my top 10 so i was this was the most that i was nervous with to do yeah. because when you like a lot the song since the first listen you're like oh my god i hope she likes me because i still i really like her song so i'm like i, I shot angry. my pants with with bambi i shot my pants i blacked <laughs> out i blacked and out bones is yeah. like it's a song that i never i don't to be honest i don't have it in my top 15 but now talking and interviewing him and seeing he could sit there and I could do because I did my two two questions. I had just two questions that I, I asked. I've seen it, yeah. And then and then with Don's was the only feeling that I had that I could ask him another seven. And he was just standing there, he would just come for me because he came even for me in a mm -hmm. fun way. And he was the only one who really I was talking to him, he was answering, he was looking into my eyes. You know, really, yeah. right? The He's looking into your everybody, eyes. Everybody did it, but Don's was like he looks straight in your eyes. He's very like uh, humble. He's like g going for you in a funny way. He throws like funny stuff in the air. With the others, it was like an interview, which was fun. And it was yeah, done yeah. perfectly. But with Don's, it was like just fun. And that's yeah. why I want him to qualify now. <laughs> yeah, he's so, such such a nice guy. But now for me, everyone that I spoke were there to talk to me. Like they were they were open to have a conversation. The thing is that I was so overwhelmed by the whole situation that I had to grab people to ask them to come with like a, a competition of other press people, you know, who will grab the artist first. Like it that's was why, too much for me and I was why, alone. That's, know, why and I'm, that's why I'm a bit stressed about uh, the press that we got for Eurovision because there it will be hell. Yeah, and, but there it's going to be, I think, a different situation. I haven't been pressed to Eurovision before, but now... I have no idea. Ah, we haven't said it uh, while we're recording. We are all pressed to Eurovision. We're going to be in Malmo. Oh, we didn't say that. Yeah, no. no. On the recording, we didn't. Yeah, true. We are. 
We are. We are Oakley. And so many others that we know, like all yes. of us, everybody. And now that we say that, like I was thinking, I don't know how it works, but I think that it's hell. Uh, I, th- I don't know. I have no idea. I haven't been there. We have to talk with them. Have you been there? That's the shame. You haven't. I've only done online. Um, based on um, Nush, Oz and Laura last year, which I was following, I think it's very difficult to interview. I think being in the press room, it's more about covering rehearsals and family okay. shows mm. rather than actually, because who did they actually get? I think But they, they did Greece. manage to interview. They managed to interview Gustav. Oh yeah, Greece. Um, did they? Uh, Blanca Gustav? Paloma. Blanca, Blanca Paloma. Paloma. Yeah, they did manage to interview. Yeah, but yeah. imagine that from the seven they managed to do three. Yeah, so this is yeah. it's it's less. Yeah, but also think about that we are there one week and basically we are there Monday and Tuesday there's the semi final. So Monday, so basically when are you going to interview them? Before the dress rehearsal, after the dress rehearsal, before the semi final? Like when is the interview going to happen? You know, like everything yeah. is happening so fast in this one week. <laughs> Yeah, true, true. Can we talk about the songs? Can we talk about the performances? The... Okay, uh, have we have we covered that? Hold a minute, Costas hasn't actually finished London. Ah, you wanted to tell us something. What did I want to say? That we said that we talk about it while recording, before the recording, and you I said there was some drama with London. Yeah, the drama. Okay, let's. Let's go there, which I think is relevant to the performances, so maybe it's a good transition as well. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the, the drama, uh, it, it's it's political. It has to do with protest. There was a protest outside. Okay. But from what I've seen in person, because it's a different story from what I saw afterwards, the day after on social media, in person, the, the protest was very peaceful. They had flyers with uh, all of the artists' um, faces, like there was one flyer with Oli, one flyer with Nebulosa, one flyer with all of them that were supposed to participate. And they were coming to us while we were at the queue. We were at the queue an hour because the the concert was delayed. Um, So they were coming, they were giving us the flyers, uh, they were, and they were like, don't worry, we, we come in peace, like, don't be scared, like, we don't, like they were they were very friendly to us. What I heard afterwards, and I don't know, give me more information because I haven't seen like a full video or something. I haven't like I heard that someone threatened even Ollie or something like that. I have no idea. Now I have no- I I was on Twitter that evening and that really infuriated me. Every person that commented, I feel sorry for Ollie, and every person that shared that image infuriated me because I had people sending me pictures of that mini protest, because it was a mini protest. There was hardly It was like there. 15 people, 10 but people. But if you'd gone to Twitter, you would think there were 5,000 people there. And as a result, they were they basically, they were just feeding off each other on Twitter that evening. And I was like, Stop, stop retweeting this because it's not true. It is a tiny group and you've given a tiny group a massive platform. I'm not saying I disagree with them being there or anything like that, freedom of speech, 100%. But at the end of the day, as far as I was aware, based on the pictures and videos that people sent me, it was nothing. It was nothing. No, it was a really Twitter- a peaceful protest with people saying what they believe in, but with not without saying to anyone like, you have to do this. You don't go to the concert. You artist. Can I like, know what the picture of all is? What kind of picture? What do you mean? It was. It was. It was just a leaflet saying Ollie should boycott. Yeah, but there was a oh, leaflet. It? There was a leaflet, a flyer saying boy uh, Ollie, you should boycott. Then there was another flyer with Nebulosa's picture saying Nebulosa, you should boycott. You know, like it was for everyone, not just for Ollie. But for me, like it was, again, I'm not going to name any names and they're they're people that I really, really like. We had the same thing in Barcelona. I saw it 
And I thought, first of all, it's, I'm not going to take a picture of them because I need to ask their permission. That's my general rule of thumb. But also, I'm not going to take a picture and put it on Twitter like some people did to make it a bigger deal. It was literally 20 I people. Have, and, they were, and they were smiling. They were smiling. They were smiling, they were smiling. They were... in London as well. They were smiling. They were peaceful. And I saw some people take advantage of that situation and to put make it on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. No, I took a video of this and I will, I, I'm, I'm having that edited because I, I'm going to do a mini vlog of my first experience at London pre-party. And I will have, I, I took a small video, like a few seconds, to see how small and peaceful it mm. was, you know? like. For me, the person who did it, I do love them. It's not against their character. I just don't think that that action, I was quite surprised the next morning. It must have been within like 60 seconds of seeing it and then it going on Twitter. So thinking, I, I just, I think that that was a bad move. First of all, they've not asked your permission. Second of all, they came up with leaflets. Georgie, they were smiling. They weren't aggressive in any way, shape, no, or form. Not at and all. moreover, they were tiny. They were such a small group. If but you take a picture and put it on picture. Twitter, you amplify something. And they, and were, not, they were not going for us zero percent we mm. were they we didn't have any kind of problem mm. and actually actually honestly me personally being me because they kept repeating the same thing i was repeating it also <laughs> 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 because they were repeating 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 that was like <laughs> oh my <God>. okay <laughs> having said that so we come to the performances i'm gonna dump them all and go to the end because this is the connection with the protest and whatever was said on twitter only when he performed he was good like his voice was good although it didn't sound that good in the videos but in in the club it sounded fine in my ears like there were some shaky moments but it's a live performance it can happen you know but his yeah. voice was good his energy was weird. It then, was. It felt like he didn't. What he was not on stage to perform. He he was singing his song like he's singing it at a bar, be, like I a small also, bar. I would be also like this if I had to perform at twelve in the night, almost last or last. And they he knew. Like, wait a minute. Fun. He knew that when. Wait. He, he came one hour later. I don't know what time he was supposed to go out, but he came, he, he came out at around one o'clock, I think. But at least I knew that the the show will finish at two and he was the last one. So anyway, if it wasn't one, it would be 1230. You know what I mean? Like he knew he would be out late. I don't know. So then I've heard that he was um, threatened about something that it might be true. I don't know. And then I was, but but then I was like, I didn't see something like that from at least from this protest. I don't know if something else happened on the internet or you know what I mean. Yeah. And then I see that PBU releases a statement about online harassment and harassment to the artist, and I'm like, maybe something happened that I didn't see because I wasn't everywhere at all. At all. At, every time every moment so yeah first, I, first I and foremost they um <clears throat> um irrespective of whether ollie had x y and z ollie has been out there for a very long time and moreover has what some people would say controversial beliefs not controversial but basically believes in things that potentially this isn't the first time that they would have had any hate or death threats i can't imagine that i it's, uh, I again, it's. Um, oh, just. I, I think they, they, no, as in like, I can't. What are, what are the controversial thing that all, things that all these all believes? No, because he's very he's very political in the sense yeah, that I love yeah, that I, about him. So it, it, this won't be the first time that he's ostracized yeah. in any way, shape, or form. What before. what I think might have happened is because he's very political, and these protests were happening. Maybe that made him be like. What am I doing? Why am I here? You know? No. no. I had heard he'd had a bad day. Regarding to what? Just had a, had a bad day. Did he broke up with his boyfriend? No. 
So he just had a bad day and he decided that I'm not going to be 100% on my job. Well, I have a bad day. Bye. Yeah. Oh, but he probably, Shane cannot say it, but it's probably something very serious. Is it serious? That's what I'm asking. Oh. No. Uh. Okay. So, so, so basically he didn't have anything serious. He just had a bad day and he decided not to perform well for all these people that came for him. I, it might, it might be, a, it might be a complete disconnect. It might be a complete disconnect okay. between having a bad day and that performance that we've all now seen. Um, again, if we, if we want to kind of try and induce, th- like bring things out of what we do know, I saw him in Madrid at exactly the same time as you did, and I got everything. Yeah, the Madrid I love. Just to make it clear something about the London Eurovision party, there was a problem. There was a problem with the sound. Who was responsible for that? Is there someone to blame? Because mistakes happen as well. Like we are, everything is controlled by human beings, right? So mistakes happen. I want to say that even though there was a problem with the sound, the hosts were amazing. They were covering everything. Like being real about being a problem and now we have to cover something. But they made it funny. They made it work. They made the, the audience keep going. The hosts were amazing. And also the, the, the performances sounded much better inside the club than what they sounded in the videos that I saw later on, because I was seeing people being kind of upset with the performances, uh, like saying that no one performed well at London party. And I'm like, this is not what I saw. And then I saw the videos and I'm like, this is not what I heard, you know, it was very weird. So I don't know. If the sound problem was also a sound to how it moved to the video, I don't know. I don't know. If someone who's watching is a sound engineer and understands how these things work and whose fault is it, let us know in the comments. Were the people uh, very screaming and stuff after the performances? (laughs) Because on the videos, to me, it felt very boring crowd. Or did uh, they it, it depends. It depends. They were not. They were not screaming that much. That, uh, was, boring. that was a boring crowd. You it need wasn't Spanish a boring fans. crowd. Like no, when when you need you need more Spanish fans in the crowd. That's what you need, London. No, the thing the thing is that every time an artist would stop singing, then they would start like uh, saying yeah. a cappella their, their their song or and then the crowd would shout back like the the crowd was very responsive but yeah i agree that they were not really singing out loud but i was also not where the the crowd where i was at the mezzanine upstairs okay. so i i'm I, not sure if i would i am um... I can't remember her name now. She's a stand-up comic and she did a tour of a Eurovision event around the UK. I should really plug that. She did a whole thing afterwards on Instagram saying that she was surprised how many people in there aren't Eurovision fans. And she said that she was really surprised that there were quite a lot of people in there that basically when this year's songs come on, they didn't know them. Whereby in Madrid and Barcelona, everybody knows them. I don't know if that was your experience, Costas. Got it. Uh, no, at least where I was at the mezzanine, everyone knew them, you know, like, I don't know downstairs what was happening, if some people, but they were all dancing, like they were moving to the songs, like they were dancing. Uh, I met, um, an artist from last year upstairs, uh, where I was sitting, he was right behind me. Uh, I said the gender anyway. Uh, and apparently he's not a very big Eurovision fan. Oh, That's he doesn't. Fun. He hasn't heard the songs this year, most of them. And I was like, "Why?" And he was like, "I don't really like Eurovision." So it was someone that didn't take a good place at Eurovision, right? Or probably didn't even qualify. Don't tell me it was Gustav. No, he, Gustav he, has, he, he, has he, heard he, all he. of the songs. Gustav is uh, yeah. like he was traveling to come to London, and he go to the whole playlist to listen to all of the songs. You know about all of them. Okay, I need to know who. Is it a male okay. or a female? He male. said male. 
Is it? Are they part of a band? If someone can guess in the comments, you can say the name, but I will not uh, say yes. Are they or a no. solo act? They are a solo. Oh, wait, uh, I need, I need no because this. And uh, moving on. on. Moving on to performances. Who... Can I say because oh. it took way too long? Can I say who was my winner of the night from yes. London? From um, London? No, tell me in person in Barcelona, who was the winner of the night? Yeah, I want to say about London. <laughs> I will we'll talk about London after. Tell me what, in, what you saw in person. Okay, my uh, win from Barcelona ones. Yeah. The two that I had uh, the most uh, goosebumps with were Sliman in Slovenia. But... Mm -hmm. Angelina Mango is absolutely I love. Amazing, I, bro. Oh, I loved. I loved the song. I loved her. I loved. What so, about you, Shane? Madrid and Barcelona? Last catch up for Barcelona. No, don't play that. No, I'm joking. Right, your... um, Madrid, uh, Madrid, Madrid, Madrid. Um, who was my favorite? Oh, I, I mean, boring Nemo. Um, and then... I'm so for... sad Nemo was not in London. Yeah, I haven't seen Nemo either. Yeah, like, literally, like, even people that were lukewarm to the song, as soon as they finished, yeah. people said they're winning. Like It came first in the odds after that, yeah, after that performance. It, it was sublime. Um, and then moving on from that, I mean, I didn't see them in... Madrid, so it elevated it, and it's my favorite song this year. It's Sliman, like it was just phenomenal in Barcelona, France. Yeah. Okay, okay. For me, um, from London, I will say two as well. One, Bumpy Thug Eight. Eight. It yeah. doesn't. It doesn't come on the like. It doesn't show on the video as much. As what happened in the arena, also the crowd went bananas for Bambi Tag. And their their first uh, song as well, they performed two songs. Their first song was also amazing. And one that is not in my personal top, top 10, top 15, maybe even not top 20, but Nutsa. That was eight, eight, that stayed. It's eight. Oh. This I was like, she peed all over the stage. I was like, what am I literally. watching now? And literally, the, probably the only performance on YouTube right now from the performances that is 10 out of 10 vocally, yeah. 10 out of 10 performance-wise, 10 yeah. out of 10 being there. Nuta is, to me, it's in my personal uh, top 50, she's 11th. That doesn't matter. This is this could do the best result out of all of the pop songs. Mm. She also that. didn't speak to all of the press. I have to say that she looked fabulous in the press room, by the way. But yes, she didn't speak to all of them. But when she went on stage, the thing that I saw, I was like, "What am I watching now?" The yeah. performance, the voice while she was dancing, amazing. I, and and this is not one of my favorite songs. I wasn't expecting to enjoy this performance that much. It it was crazy. She ate that stage. It's the I like it's I I haven't seen all of them yet, but hers is the only one that I was able to watch the whole time because the others I just felt sorry for them. Like yeah. some of those recordings from London are just not okay. Um, that's no shade on London Eurovision party. It's just, it's just unfortunate that they're just not okay. But that one, I was because again, it's not, it's not in my top twenty at all, Georgia this year. But I was like, oh my gosh, note perfection. That was amazing. Yeah. I feel For example, I didn't experience the magic of Suleiman live because there were problems with the mic. He was the first one to come uh, on the stage, and like he, he did the thing where he walks like away from yeah. the microphone and he's out. But he also started saying English words at that moment. And the sound wasn't going very well from afar to the microphone. <laughs> well, he, while he was... <laughs> yeah. While he was singing close to the microphone, we could 
listened to him great, but when he went far, we lost his voice. And he started singing in English. And also, it's kind of a turn off to this song, the English lyrics. I was like, oh no, I want the friends. Where are the friends? But he, uh, as Georgie, I've seen one of your videos, you said he did the same in Barcelona where he did it in Spanish. Spanish. Mm. He did the same part, but in Spanish. Yeah. And Spanish people went crazy. I'm assuming Spanish and not Catalan. I think Spanish. I think it was Spanish. And mm. Spanish people went crazy. That went, that was the viral moment. Yeah. Of the no, people were, were happy and I heard, oh, it's, it's English, it's English. Like people got excited. But for me, as a fan of this song, because it's one of my favorite songs this year, I was like, oh, I want the French back, you know, like I, did, I wanted the original version. But no, uh, I didn't experience that magic because it, there was obvious that there was a technical issue there in his performance. Yeah. And also another technical issue, but it's not with the mics or with, it doesn't have to do with the organization. Yeah, yes! My oh queen. my God! I see. I watched the performance six times and <laughs> I, I freaking love her. Like, no matter what, she should, first of all, never wear so less girl. Like, <laughs> move a bit when you wear something. Move already there behind. Do stuff so you can see if it stays. Like, you know what? I'm thinking about it. I think like... Things it, happen. I think something, she pulled something where she took the, when she took the jacket off, you know? Yeah. That's where the problem started happening. No, so, Kaleen, don't do that on Eurovision. Don't, because it's her last chance. It's better than it happened now. So she's yeah. going to be prepared for Eurovision, you know. I, by the I way, know. I love Kaleen. I did an interview with her. She was so funny. I love her. And, yeah. But yeah, I was like, oh my God, girl, what happened now, you know? Yeah. Inside the arena in Madrid, uh, Shane, did Kaleen sound bad? No, right? I lo I've learned this now. I'm very careful what I say after the show in regards to, I remember, I think it was two years in Madrid. It's like what I hear in the room is very different than what was being transmitted at home. Maybe it was even last year because it was live stream last year. And I remember doing my kind of top things. And then in the comments, people were like, but they were awful. They were awful. And then I watched the live stream. I was like, yeah, I didn't hear it. Like, And I, I think you just hear something else in the room. Yeah. That's always true because basically I only think... Barcelona was the one that we heard everybody very good. And uh, was Bessa in pa in London? L Bessa didn't come to London. Oh, I thought because there there were problems with her visa. That's where the oh. visa comes. Uh, Bessa had a problem with her visa. Nebulosa didn't come to London because they had a problem with their flight. That's what yeah, was they... said in the morning <laughs> of the day. But oh. then. Also, we were blogs. I think it was we were blogs that posted on Twitter the next day that Besta didn't come for visa and Nebulosa didn't come for the their flight. There was problems with the flight and for personal reasons. And I was like, "What happened there?" Because in the morning I saw that they were trying to fix the problem. Like one airline didn't work. They called another airline. The other airline replied in another comment, like, "How can we help?" You know, so something. I think there was an intention to for things to get fixed, but I don't know what happened and why it didn't come. There's, there's two narratives. There's one more accurate one, which is what Paco was telling us, based on, obviously, knowledge on the ground. They're tired. Um, this that I didn't realize they went to America. At the end of the day, they got a business. They got two young children. Um, and, you know, they were up very late. They were the final show in Barcelona. They're doing two shows this weekend. And I've heard that they're quite tired. And you can say X, Y, and Z about like, you got to be professional X, Y, and Z. Moreover, they're already in Spain. So they're going to fly from Spain to London to come back to Spain. All the other artists that got that very early flight, because they changed the flight yeah. from what was a reasonable flight to a really early flight. Those artists had to take that flight because they were coming home or going home from London so it made total yeah, sense. Yeah. But it would have been a complete, and it's so unfortunate for people in London, but for Nebulosa, it would have been a ball ache to go to London. I have to, I, I reply to that. First of all, I agree that it was very unfortunate because I was expecting Nebulosa so much. I love Thora. 
Uh, but I understand what you say. Also, don't, let's not forget that Nebulosa, both of them, they're not at the age of other artists. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not saying that for like. I feel it like after I passed my thirties, my body has changed. You know, and I guess if I pa pass my forties, my body will change even more. Why are you guys laughing? It wasn't no, Shane. No, no, no. That That's totally true. Shane knows exactly what you're talking about because he's old. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're not yeah. old, Shane. Yeah. No, I'm say I, I'm I'm really not shady now. I'm saying that but very Shane, seriously. But that they have they have to protect themselves. Like all of the artists have to protect themselves. If they feel that they are crossing a limit, then protect themselves. Like don't but do I, a show, Shane, don't do an interview. Take care of yeah. yourself because what matters is the the Malmo, you know, yeah, uh, performance. And uh, yeah. Uh, if if that was the reason and they were tired and they were like, we cannot fly this early in the morning after we performed last last night, you know, I'm like, I I agree. I accept also, I'm using that word tired and that can be interpreted in so many different ways. If someone watched this like, oh, tired, like I had heard leading up to Barcelona, it's more than tired. It's taking a... a a, an emotional mental strain like they like they are doing quite an intensive like i said i didn't know that they that the spanish broadcaster sent them to america i didn't know that i didn't um, know that either they're, they're not full-time touring artists they've got a beauty shop or whatever it is i think their youngest child is 14 or 15 i think they're very young yeah and i think they just didn't anticipate how intense this kind of like mini tour would be. So even yeah. before they got to Barcelona, because Paco told me when I arrived, he had heard that Nebulosa were quite tired. But I say tired in, in a more extreme way. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand it. That's why I straight away took their, their side on that, because I understand that by tired, you meant like exhausted physically and mentally, maybe, yeah. you know, like if, yeah. if, if, and art, artists are human beings, like, I was a bit harsh before to what you said about Oli, like he did, had a bad day and he did, did, decided not to perform. But I think that's very different to this one that we are talking about two people that felt exhausted. If this is the and case for, have... for Oli before, I take it back as well. And like if this is the case for Oli and he ha had his limit and he was like, I can't do this anymore. Like I need a break, you know, I understand that. That's fair. And then you have those that are tired from touring and then you have those that are eating souvlaki and tzatziki at their place until Mal Malmo time, like Marina Sati, that don't go anywhere. Uh, if 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 situation was in different, I would agree with you, and I would re read Marina and the Greek delegation. But also Marina lost her father these days, so I think that even if she had uh, to every party arranged, she wouldn't have gone. Mm -hmm. uh, for, and also the the funerals in Greece happen like one or two days after, like straight away. So I don't think she would have done the pre-parties anyway at this. Uh, and also um, Marina and Celia are not at the turquoise carpet on Sunday in Malmo. Is it's that because of the Orthodox Easter? It's because of the Easter. So are you going to the turquoise carpet? <laughs> because you're not getting an interview from Marina. <laughs> I'm not going to the turquoise carpet. I'm coming to the Ma to, to the Malmo. So I'm coming to Malmo midnight between 5th and 6th, Ma Sunday and Monday. Sunday is the turquoise carpet. I'm coming towards Monday. Okay. Are you going to be at the turquoise carpet? I, do I cannot make it. I am going to be in Malmo Monday early morning. Yeah. And you saying? No, I'm gonna be arriving Wednesday night. You no. will see Shane. You will see Shane at the Wee Wee Jam. Do we have to say anything else about the pre-parties? I mean, we talked a lot about the press, about the idea of we, it. We talked so much. I don't know what I'm gonna edit and what our people are, are gonna be watching. If if people, if you are still here after all this time, I don't know how long this video is gonna be. And you are not subscribed to all of our channels. Why? Like you stayed with us for so long. Subscribe. Like what's happening, right? But we talked a lot. We, we did talk a lot. We did. We did. We really did. And it's uh, late. And I want to thank you guys for being here, for spending all of your Wednesday evening with me. 
I had the Thank you for letting me record with you and Georgie. Yes, oh, thank you know, because it's like, it's different. It's a like- gate, I was a gate crasher, so I appreciate yeah. it. We have, no, we, have, we, have, no, we have a third person and that's fun. Yeah, it's like you're doing ESC work with a guest, but I'm actually the host. Mm. <laughs> yes. If that makes I like sense. It. I could have rests. I could like sit back. And yeah, do I'm going to do the editing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, I had much fun with the video. It, we talked about our all of our aspects, what we lived. And yeah. for me, especially, this is like our first time at Presses. Yeah, so it was. Kind of um, experience. And then Shane brings also his experience of doing this for a uh, third Of age. Time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of age i bring i bring the age the wisdom oh, we're bring... not that far we're not that far shane are we not no shane you bring the ill in eurovision i'm gonna be 33 after eurovision that i mean that's the same age as georgie pretty much what no he's older he is older to be fair yeah. um you're 91 born right yeah where, okay. where are you i'm 92 i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> you're excused for one year <laughs> but um, no, it was very much fun and I hope uh, I hope you I mean we all enjoyed it I like I like talking about Eurovision I can talk endlessly about Eurovision I know right so thank you so much guys and thank you guys everyone you you <laughs> thank you guys uh, what did I want to say <laughs> everyone who watched the video thank you thank you <laughs> See you at another video. Bye. Bye. Bye.